The Global Forum on Bioethics in Research will hold its next meeting on the theme, Ethical Issues Arising in Research with People with Mental Health Conditions. The purpose of this video is to provide an overview of the meeting topic. You'll be hearing from several members of the forum's planning committee as we explain the main themes that we consider important. The video is being published with a call for applications to attend the forum. Please check the GFBR website if you're interested in presenting a case study or governance paper on the meeting theme or attending as a participant. Applications are judged competitively and successful colleagues from low and middle income countries will be given a grant to cover the costs of their attendance. The Global Forum in Bioethics and Research addresses a different topic in research ethics each year. I'm glad the forum has chosen to focus on research with people with mental health conditions because firstly, mental health conditions are a leading cause of disability globally and there is a need for research to address this and to find context appropriate approaches. Secondly, restraints on resources, especially in low and middle income countries. We will be highlighting some of these constraints and we will also be highlighting some of the ethical challenges um, that are picked up later in the video. For instance, we'll be looking at conceptualization of mental ill health, stigma and discrimination, engagement and co-creation. Thirdly, explaining the need for inclusion and problems of exclusion of people with mental health conditions is critical, particularly when they're excluded from research. In particular, exclusion from non-mental health research leading to a poorer evidence base for the population. And fourthly, the need for broader debate and collaboration on this topic so we can learn from each other making it an ideal topic for the GFBR. One of the first challenges the planning committee faced in defining the scope of this year's theme of the ethics of mental health research was the languaging of mental health. The committee recognised that the language and terminology we use can reveal implicit biases in the way we perceive and approach mental health. This includes the many phrases used to describe mental ill health. For example, speaking of mental disorder can reflect a biomedical framing, whereas mental health problems may indicate a biopsychosocial model that recognises a range of determinants of mental health. As the mental health field engages with a range of languages, cultures and social contexts around the globe, it is accepted that conceptualisations of and responses to mental health are strongly contextually influenced. Historically, the mental health discipline has been heavily influenced by Western psychiatry structured around diagnostic labels and categorizations. There is debate about the influence of classification systems, with some arguing these have stimulated mental health research, whilst others point to the marginalization of ways of knowing outside of the biomedical model, echoing broader debates about the validity of diagnostic categories. Research contributing to these debates include studies that document locally relevant language and ways of understanding and communicating about well-being and distress and ways to intervene to improve mental health. This demonstrates a balanced approach to mental health research that acknowledges universal features alongside the contributions of context and culture, reflecting the diversity of ways of understanding and addressing mental health as neurologically, socially or spiritually determined. This overview has briefly summarised one of the forum's themes, that how we conceptualise mental health research carries ethical implications. This includes how a study is framed, often revealed implicitly through the use of language, and methodologically, such as if and how we measure mental health. These considerations are important for me both mental health research and for the inclusion or exclusion of those experiencing mental health problems from research in general. And they are topics that this year's Global Forum on bioethics and research welcome your submissions on. The value of engaging people with mental health condition in research is being recognized by a growing number of researchers. If meaningfully engaged people with mental health condition bring on board an expertise that is based upon experience. This expertise is instrumental in setting research priorities as well as in the design actual conduct, implementation, and dissemination of research. In cases where this engagement is done in a genuine and non-tokenistic way, 
experts by experience are empowered through greater self-awareness and can also help researchers contextualize sensitive methodologies that are feasible and acceptable to individuals. Let me give an example of a research that was conducted in Ethiopia to explore how to achieve involvement of experts by experience in mental health system strengthening. A theory of change model was produced with a range of stakeholders, including experts by experience and caregivers. Then a participatory action research approach was applied and stakeholders, including experts by experience and caregivers, identified top local priorities that need to be addressed to achieve involvement. A smaller research participant group comprising experts by experience, caregivers and health professionals was then established and worked together to explore in more depth the priorities identified by the stakeholders. An action plan was then developed, which the research participant group is implementing with assistance from academic researchers. Experts by experience were involved at all stages of this research process, including dissemination of the outcomes of the research as engaged owners of the process. This is just one example of how experts by experience have been involved in research. At Global Forum on Bioethics Research, we want to discuss what other methods have been used to engage experts by experience to promote the co-creation of mental health research methods and practice. We are also interested to explore who else should be engaged. For example, when and how should carers or local communities be engaged and for what purpose? We invite you to submit a case study on this interesting team and share your engagement experiences. Stigma and discrimination for the people with mental health issues is a worldwide problem and it is a precursor for the social exclusion and human rights violations. In this context, people with mental health issues may be vulnerable to stigma through their participation in mental health research. To mitigate this, the researcher needs to train the data collection team in privacy, confidentiality, respect and dignity. It is important to remember that the research should not make research participants more vulnerable or increase self-stigma. For example, if a woman who is a research participant and undergoing domestic violence then labeling her with mental illness will cause more harm to her. As explained earlier in this video, people across different cultures and geographies use different language and explanatory framework to address mental health problems. Language is an important contributing factor to stigma and a researcher needs to be mindful of this when they design the research study. Thus, the stigma and discrimination can be a huge barrier for conducting research at individual and community level. A researcher needs to understand the language, culture and social views regarding mental health while designing the research study. We welcome your case studies on this important theme. The case study could draw on real life research to discuss what strategies researchers can adopt throughout the research process to mitigate or address mental health related stigma or the case study could discuss what approaches can be used to aid cultural understandings of stigma towards those with mental health problems. For example, if you have an experience of running an anti-stigma campaign as part of your research. Research is essential to improve healthcare for all members of society. That is why people with mental health conditions who lack or have fluctuating capacity must have equitable access and opportunity to participate in health research as any other person. As vulnerable persons, they require special protection. However, protection by exclusion seems to be the answer in many countries in my region of Latin America. There is a tendency for research legal frameworks and those that implement them 
to protect adults lacking capacity to consent by excluding them from research, even while meeting legislation can have this unexpected consequence. For example, in my home country of Argentina, the implementation of the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities sought to increase autonomous decision-making and avoid paternalism, so they can participate in research only if they give their own consent with the support of a third party if required. But there's a regulation gap. What happens with adults lacking capacity to consent? By previous law, an authorized representative could give consent on their behalf. But is this allowed by current civil law or is it a paternalistic approach? And if it is allowed, who can decide on behalf of the individual? What is the basis for decision making in research? Is it the best interest of the person or his or her pursued will? This legal uncertainty reinforces the tendency by those approving and conducting research to exclude them to avoid difficult decisions about seeking consent for their participation in research. To honor the rights of persons with mental health conditions, a shift must be made from misguided protectionisms towards regulatory models that promote appropriate inclusion and advanced research that addresses the health needs of these populations, and eventually, ensure the rights for equitable health care for all. I've given an example of the regulatory model in my country, with by submissions of governance papers that explore this theme in other national contexts. Does your country's current ethic governance structure, processes and practices support the inclusion of people with mental health condition in research or result in exclusion? This video has described a number of things for the next CFPR meeting. Details on how to submit a case study, a governance paper, or how to apply as a participant are available on the CFPR website. Ultimately, the meeting agenda will be determined by the submissions we receive. So we look forward to receiving your submissions and to hearing from you what you think are the most important ethical and governance issues arising in research with people with mental health conditions.